What's up, Groovers? What's up, YouTube? Uh, What's up, guys? Today I'm going to be doing a couple production tips um, that make your music sound better, more interesting, what have you. That's what I use on a lot of songs. So, number one, we got the Haas effect. Groove cue. Wow. Basically, the Haas effect is just taking a signal that's mono and making it super stereo. So, here we have some guitar. It's just dead mono. Perfect. What do you want? We got the Haas effect. We can just turn that on. I'll show you how to make this too. And then boom, it's all in your ears. Stereo. So let's make one. Um, so basically, you'll just take an effect rack, throw it in, you'll make two channels, uh, make one left, one, re one right. Oh gosh, get one of them and put a delay on it. Find the delay, boom. And you want to make sure feedback is at zero, ping pong is off. We'll put it to about 80%. Um, turn these off, put these to 15 milliseconds. milliseconds. So that means the left channel is going to be hitting 15 milliseconds later than the right one. And then boom. And I can switch it from the left and right, that makes a difference, so it's like this now. Hear that? When I switched it to the right one, it kind of made the left one more potent because the left one's hitting before the right one. So if you, you can um, switch them like that. So if you have two things that are Haas affected, um, here, we'll do this. Um, just make this sound a little different, so we'll put it up an octave. Okay, so um, one of them has the Haas effect on the left and right side, and this one will switch it. So, And now it's balanced out. So before, it's all like on that left side. Alright, so here we are in the track How Are You that I put out a while ago. Check it out. Um, so we're going to go into the synths and then we're going to look at the guitars. Now the guitars are like super wide. They're left and right and you always want to do that because the guitars get really in the way of the vocals. So you can just hear where it is in the mix. So you can hear what it would sound like if we just had one guitar and it was in the middle. It would sound super muddy. I'm lonely and depressed. It just makes it super wide. So if you look into this, is you have your right guitar, which is here. The guitar rig's a little bit different. Um, just slight variations in the left and right. Um, compression, OTT, and then um, some just like some EQ. And, and then the left sounds a little bit different like this. Again, it's a different kind of guitar rig. So the left one is where we have the delay. And what I do is I'm um, like here, I can just delete this. And so I'll just type in Haas and I'll grab my little Haas effect thing that I made. Just take that, bring it in. And since you're working with two channels now, instead of putting it on one thing, you'll just put it on one of them. So what I'll do when this loads, I'll just take the delay, take it off, boom, put it there and then delete the rest. And now you get the same effect as if you were doing one thing, but you have two channels and you can affect each one differently. Beautiful. Real quick before we go to the next step, I just wanted to say please follow me on Patreon and subscribe and like. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this or let me know what you want me to teach music production wise. Also with the corona thing, like I'm normally a wedding DJ for work so all my weddings till like May have just cancelled or had to move their date so I'm really kind of struggling. Help me out if you want. Alright guys, second production tip is to not always be on time. I know especially in like dance music, it's all four on the floor, it's all very like on time most of the time, but it is nice to experiment and get kind of off time and make things that are a little bit more interesting. And the one part of How Are You, like the drums got a little drunk and they just don't really know. So normally the kicks are just hitting, but here things get a little different, they get a little off time you can see. But especially down at the snares, all the snares are a little early. Um, here's like one snare that's on time and then the rest kind of accompany. Same with the hi-hats, they're a little bit late. Some things are early, some things are late. It's kind of a little chaotic because things are like four on the floor. They're all very on time beforehand, but then all of a sudden they get kind of out of time and then later they go back in time here, so. And then we go back on time. 
nothing sitting at the same time. So like the clap's hitting first, this is a little late, that's a little tiny bit late, that's even later, that's late as well. And then most of the time in like a rhythm track you would take the snare and just put it a little bit beforehand so that way you hear the snare first and then the kick so it's and it's a lot more impactful. Alright guys, tip number three is placement. So what I like to do a lot of times, I like look up symphony seat arrangements. And they're set up this way for a reason. Um, our right and left ears don't hear completely the same. You can see like the drums are like 25% right, and then like pianos, 25% left. They say that like our left ear hears music better, and our right ear hears like drums better. So I think maybe that's why they have this kind of setup. Um, but it's good to look at and reference. So if you're making a symphony, you can recreate this, or you could like switch out any of these instruments with whatever's in your song. Here you have that in practice. This is a really weird song. Start to bob your head, shake it till you're dead, riding on a unicorn. We'll turn off those vocals, and then you can just listen to the instrumental. It's just like, especially, especially that like one bit at the end. I don't know why that one sounds like super right, and then you just have a piano right there, all together. I don't know about you guys, but that just sounds really nice to me. And of course, always just make whatever sounds good to you, but think about placement. Alright, next up I want to talk about is magic slash effects. So, I mean, you have your song, it's just like maybe drums, guitar, a vocal or anything like that. Um, and like you can make a perfectly normal song, um, but I really like to mix things up. So like maybe the vocal will have like some effects on it, and I'll do a bunch of like glitchy things, just things that kind of like are out of the ordinary and make the track more interesting as a whole. So I've recorded these voice memos of like a stream nearby. Um, so I just kind of did the same thing with the Hoss effect. I put like a little bit of delay on one of these. You can hear that. It's just like really nice. Some water sounds. Um, there's also me just running here knocking on a door. Any found sounds, if you put that in your track, it's just that more interesting and that more unique to you. Same with using your own voice. Um, so here, let me show you what that sounds like in the mix. I think it, using effects, especially at the beginning and ends of songs, really like sets a place and a mood for the rest of the song. So here's some vocals I made in another instance of Ableton, and I'm even putting more effects on them, but I put a bunch of effects in here as well. So just things that make it sound more interesting. Like, uh, so yeah, in the mix. Alright, the next production dip, dip, tip, is to dry wet anything. So there are some things that don't have a dry wet knob. For example, guitar rig. I don't think there's a dry wet knob in here. You'll have this really intense kind of guitar rig you want to throw on some guitar. And that's just like all this doesn't make sense. Um, with the dry wet knob, you can kind of put it halfway. Now you get the original signal coming through and all the extra stuff. So let me show you how to make one. So what you do is you go over to your effect rack, make a new one, make two chains. Um, we're going to call this one wet, dry, dry balls, because I'm funny. No, it's blue balls, whatever. Um, so then we'll go to the chain. We'll spread these guys out all the way. Boom. These little guys at the top, make sure they're fading completely. All right, I did it backwards, so and boom. All right, there we go. So that's how you dry wet anything. The last tip is kind of like a mindset kind of thing, just being healthy, um, working out also works out your ears, so just like doing push-ups or stretching before you hit the studio helps, taking intermittent breaks every hour, and then kind of just not getting lost in the loop, like a lot of times you'll start a song and you'll just kind of get lost in this one kind of loop and you're not listening to like the beginning to the end of the song. It's just like an art when you look at a piece of artwork from the other side of the room, it just gives a different perspective. Also speaking of perspectives, think about who's listening to your song, there are people that just listen to a song and all they hear is just like a chunk of all the musical elements and then the vocal on top. So there are people that just listen for the vocal and then there's people that like listen to everything inside of your mix like the drums, the bass, how things are interacting with each other. So basically just think about all the perspectives of who's going to be listening to your song and make sure that there's something for everybody. And yeah, that's it. Bye.
I eat ass. Hey, how's it going? You can stop the video.